I'm so excited to share my December reads. I read 11 books this month, which brought my total for the whole year to 112 books. Um, I think this one, which is a, a great amount for me. I kind of aim for 100, but I'm never really disappointed if I'm like shorter or above. Um, I listen to a lot of audio books, so I have a long drive to work, and that is something that um, instead of listening to like radio or music, I tend to just like put on an audiobook and enjoy my drive and um, get through my reading list that way. So the first book that I finished this month, uh, she's a big one, um, is The Winners by Frederick Bachman. And honestly, this is the third in this contemporary fiction um, fairy town series. So um, it's somewhat like a, you know, a hockey town where something happens and it just sort of throws the whole town into a bit of a bit of a frenzy. It's really character driven and like human experiences and love and friendship and just kind of everything in this little microcosm of this small town focused on one thing and oh man, just by the time you get to this book I was laughing, crying, like gasping. It was quite dramatic driving um, listening to this, but honestly these books are so, so good. Okay, and then next up is um, The Lover by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. This was um, just a little like short story um, ebook that I read. Um, it was about, it was kind of like dark fairy tale-esque, um, with like kind of a scorned lover vibe, which like down for a little bit of a revenge plot. It, it was quick. I always say that. I, I like to pick up a little a little short story, but I'm always left wanting a little bit more. But in terms of like the writing and the story, I thought it was good. And then next up, I picked up a little nonfiction, a little book of skincare by Charlotte Cho. Honestly, I've had this probably on my TBR for like five years. Um, when this would have come out, um, it would have been like amazing. By this point in time though, with my skincare journey and uh, all the blogs I've read and some of the other um, books I've read by, you know, skincare people that I trust, I thought this was good. This would be really good for somebody who's sort of looking to um, expand their skincare routine, trying to look into some of the like, um, you know, K-beauty ingredients and products and steps and routines. And, and this was good. It was still incredibly informative. It was, it was just some information that I had had. And then there's even actually little bits about like, if you want to go to Korea and go shopping, um, South Korea, what that might look like for you or some recommendations. And yeah, it, it was good. Okay, and then I read A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. So this is finishing up the Once a Broken, Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, which is that sort of like offshoot of the Carval series. And I loved the Carval series. Um, I thought this was great. This sort of is a spinoff of Jax's, who were introduced to in the second books when the fates are introduced, um, and sort of his spinoff story. And honestly, I loved him and Evangeline, and I loved sort of watching how this all unfolded in the magical north and I thought the characters were um, great and overall this was really fun and honestly this book you guys is so stunning. Um, so anyways, I, I really enjoyed this series. I thought it was cute and whimsical and fun. And then I read Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Husner and this is a sort of like whimsical little fairy tale-esque story that's um, somewhat of a retelling of the Nutcracker, but where our um, ballerina is kind of whisked away into this um, other world, which is Everwood, and um, she sort of becomes trapped there, and she sort of bands together with a few um, other women in the stories to sort of figure out how they can save themselves, and it was cute. I liked the Nutcracker vibes. Um, I found it to be like a little bit repetitive but it you know the atmosphere was good and it was well written and so I gave it um 3.5 stars um and then I read the house of roots and ruin and honestly you guys who knew that um Aaron Craig was going to take us back to um the house of salt and sorrow world but we follow one of the sisters as she kind of goes off on her own it's like so many years later and she sort of requested to go do a portrait for this family um, but it's this very like kind of gothic um, like flower dark vibes poison vibe, you know whatever that is um, anyways the vibes were so good the characters were good um, this is also a pretty like 
chunky book, but I, I really enjoyed this. And then um, like the ending, and it was just so good. I love that we're going to kind of follow these sisters, and this one came up as a surprise, but it sounds like in 2025 or 2026, we're going to get another story from another sister and just her writing and uh, everything. I, I really enjoyed this one. I'm, I gave this four stars. Okay, and then you basically know that I will pick up anything with circus vibes. Like, I'm trying to find, you know, something that will not give me the night circus because, like, you can't ever do that. But, you know, I love those vibes, and so I love that kind of circus thing. So I picked up this um, spectacle um, book one. It was a, it's a graphic novel, and it was okay. It was like a traveling circus that was fun. There's sort of like a murder mystery element in this and I appreciate that this was a book one but um yeah nothing got resolved so I don't know like I want something to be resolved in this book and then when you give me book two let's pick up like a new plot but anyway so I didn't like that I'm not gonna I'm probably not gonna carry on I just I wasn't that invested in anything and yeah it was just okay Okay, and then I read Foul Hearts Huntsman, Foul Heart Huntsman by Chloe Gong. Um, I gave this four stars to another like chonky book. I'm trying I, in December. I always try and like wrap up series and stuff that I've um, started throughout the year, just so that I don't have all of these like series overhanging my head going into the next year. And lots of these were sort of released later on in the year, so I had to rush to get through a few of them, waiting to get the audiobooks for some of them. Um, but this is okay. So. We had These Violent Delights, that duology, um, and now we have these ones, which is Foul Lady Fortune. So this is sort of the one where like all of the stories and the characters' stories and everything converge. And honestly, it was like a little bit confusing at first because there was like, I felt like everybody was like a double or a triple agent or, you know, quadruple agent. I don't even know at this point in time. Um, so I found like the middle part to be a little bit confusing, although I was following it, just trying to figure out where all of our characters were going. Um, but I loved how everything like wrapped up for all of our characters and, um, it wasn't really what I was expecting. I'm not sure what I was expecting in terms of the ending, but I, I liked it and I'm, yeah, overall I liked this, this series. I'm excited to see what else, um, Chloe Gong brings us just cause I loved her kind of characters that she chose and yeah I enjoyed this and then oh I'm so excited about this one you guys okay welcome to the OC this is the oral um history I didn't know that this was coming out but this was just released I think in October or November because of course this is the 20th anniversary of the OC um I'm not sure how because you know that I was only like 17 five years ago when this released obviously not <laughs> but the OC came out um before my grade 12 year of high school. So for me, this was like the most iconic show and I just, I watched it all the time. It was definitely something um, for me to binge and I just, I loved the characters and um, yeah, they were, you know, obviously little stereotypes, but so relatable. And then this sort of give us the background, of course, of like, why were some of the decisions made for the show or the direction? Like, why did we kill Marissa? Does anybody know? Yes, so there is some answers for those questions like in the book, but also just like the behind the scenes um, dynamics and the actors and how they were feeling this far in. And, you know, you tend not to um, think about some of that stuff during the time where, of course, you know, 20 years ago, there wasn't as much social media, although there was like blogs bugging a lot of our main characters and it really did actually kind of affect how some of them were on set and what that looks like. And anyways, just for like a fan of the show, um, 4.5 stars. I love this. This included it. So it's like an interview style book. Um, and I just loved hearing from like the directors, writers, actors, everybody sort of involved in the production of this like super iconic show. Okay, and then I read A Venom Dark and Sweet by Judy Island. Um, again, so I'm just wrapping up a magic steeped in poison um, duology. And anyways, these, are these not like the most gorgeous books you've ever seen? I absolutely just, this art is amazing. Um, I love that kind of like tea magic. I love the magic in here. And this one, it takes us quite a bit of a ways away from where the first one went and we're sort of on this quest, but our characters tend to like split up a little bit early on for their own quests. And uh, again, so I sort of like to watch 
see stories where they went and how everybody kind of converges and comes back together. Again, not quite what I was expecting, but I um, I liked where the story went. Um, I thought that these were really well written. Um, I like their characters. I like how everything came together. Um, four stars. Yeah, I, I liked this duology. Um, okay, and then I finished up with like a little, another short story um, in the Christmas Notch series, which is like basically smutty Christmas romance books. Um, this one is Snow Place um, like LA and um, <laughs> okay. I don't mind a little smut in my books, but I need like a story to go with it. And this one felt like there was no story and I was just reading up a few hours or listening to a few hours of, of smut and I didn't really like the main character and it wasn't like the best book to end the year on for me because I only gave it like two, two and a half stars. It just like, I, I liked how it ended, but I didn't, I didn't like anything else leading up to it and it would just, the character voice wasn't, um, yeah, something that I enjoyed and um, anyways, yeah, so stay tuned because now that I've wrapped up December, um, I'm going to be sharing my favorites and I can never share them um, too early because like what if on December 31st I read like the best book of the year you know I don't know how people wrap these things up on the day of because I need to like think about it all and get them all together and wait and see if I finish the year on the best note or one of the worst notes but anyways um yeah so stay tuned to see my favorites. Um, let me know what your best book was this month. For me, it was um, the winners just wrapping up that Bear Town series and being back there and our characters and where they went and just that. Yeah, it was. It's such a good book.